Real quick before we start this ride sharing video, uh, a lot of folks don't know on the channel we talk politics and then some of the videos are Uber related like this one here. I'm separating the channels. For you folks who enjoy the political side of the channel, I encourage you to follow Timothy Watts. I'll put a click here. I'll put a link in the description. But Timothy Watts is going to be more on the political side. You know, I just do live discussions with MAGA Trump supporters. We make it happen. We do it civilized every single day. Trump supporters call in quite a bit. Liberals call in as well. We have really good, interesting conversations and try to deliver good content. If that's something you want to continue to enjoy, follow my other or subscribe rather to my other YouTube channel, Timothy Watts. But here we're going to continue uh, more of the Uber videos and things of that nature. So you can get the best of both worlds or you can go over there or stay over here, whatever the hell you may want to do. And I will be trying to do far more interaction with the viewers on that channel as it develops. It's your boy Tim. Here goes. This just keeps happening. What up, folks? Once again, it is your boy Tim with another ride-sharing video. You know, one of the worst things a ride-share driver can do, whether driving for Uber or Lyft, is pick up a passenger and put them in their vehicle that someone is actively trying to injure or assassinate. And for one Iraqi refugee, that's exactly what happened. Fox 5 exclusive. The moment gunshots were fired into an Uber, it happened late Friday night. The driver says he was near the Cathedral of St. Matthew in northwest D.C., just off Connecticut Avenue, when the Uber was sprayed by gunfire. The driver ducks. A person in the backseat cowers, and it looks like from some angles, there's another person in white balled up behind the seat. The Uber driver tells Fox 5 he's from Iraq, but feels like he's in a war zone here. I just thanks God to survive because, you know, it was not easy. I can't believe I survived as well. When I saw the video after and after, I keep looking myself, look for my hand, you know, do like this. Just try to believe I'm, I'm alive. I mean, for some reason, God saved me. One person outside of the car was shot in the back. The Uber driver was struck by flying glass and suffered injuries to his arms and head. Wow. What a hair-raising experience that driver must have went through. Now, it looks like you're viewing this from the dash cam, potentially on the rear view mirror. You can even see in the rear window what appears to be the assailant's car that is trying to actively assassinate the passengers. The vehicles are so close that this certainly does not look like stray gunfire. They were trying to get the passengers in his vehicle. His vehicle was indeed shot up multiple times. Now, you hear the driver state that D.C. is like a war zone. We're talking about an individual that migrated here from Iraq during a war. So anybody that's in his circumstances says D.C. seems like a war zone, there has to be validity to it. The man just left the damn war zone. And here he is in D.C. saying it's just like a war zone there. How the hell can we stop this from continuing to happen? Well, offhand, although I do advise having defensive tools on you at all times, I don't know if that would make a difference when you're talking about a straight-up ambush where someone is trying to assassinate the passengers in your vehicle. And we've done numerous stories of other drivers that have had passengers literally killed from right up on them. Probably a half a dozen stories by now that we've done of rideshare passengers being killed while actively on a trip. A couple cases, the driver lost his life as well. Fortunately, here it doesn't appear to be where anyone was injured at all, with the exception of his vehicle. And we'll talk about that in a minute because this driver has some future hardships to deal with, although everyone survived. First off, what do we always promote? What do we always advise? Getting home to your family is the only thing you should be focused on. And I'll tell you, discriminating is fair game. If you feel like you are unsafe or it is unsafe to pick up certain passengers, drive into certain neighborhoods, or even operate at certain times of the day, don't do that shit. Do not do that shit because 
As always, there are certain things you can do as a driver that increases the, st the statistical probability of bad shit happening to you. I don't know who the two passengers were that this driver picked up. They didn't say necessarily what area the passengers were picked up from, but a lot of that plays into putting ourselves in danger. Certain neighborhoods, if you can avoid that neighborhood altogether, you might want to do that. D.C. has a hell of a lot of dangerous areas to discuss. So I'm a big fan of promoting discrimination in some cases. I understand certain people may get left out. Certain people may be disenfranchised. But folks, we're talking about dying here. We're talking about having your car taken from you. We're talking about being robbed. We're talking about dealing with someone putting a pistol to your head. This shit happens to drivers every freaking day almost. Certainly once a week, I'm able to do stories from what I'm seeing. And we know all stories are not even reported. So you're doing what is best to keep you alive, not to prevent somebody from putting a label or some bullshit on you. You're talking about coming home to your family. I'm not a fan of driving at night. I see it in every video. Nothing good happens after midnight. Once again, here is another video after hours and you see somebody shooting up this man's car. Now, we can talk about keeping defensive tools on you. I'm an avid fan of keeping something on you to protect yourself with. Mace, something to slice or poke with up to and including a firearm if you're comfortable with it. But that, that's not going to really play a big part in this case because they're behind this driver performing an ambush and lighting his vehicle up with gunfire. His best bet is to take off and try to drive out of that shit if he's not pinned or do exactly what the passengers did, kind of duck down and hope for the best. I don't know if you're going to turn around and get into a gunfight with these folks, and now they're going to start aiming at you. Clearly, they wanted the passengers. They were not trying to kill the driver. That doesn't mean they have a good aim. Most folks like this are not marksmen, so getting hit is a real possibility, but I wouldn't have, I don't know if getting into a gunfight with the drivers would have been a with the assailants would have been a good idea for the driver, even if he was armed. Sometimes there ain't shit you really can do, but ride it out. And fortunately, in this case, the, the assailants did not get out of their vehicle, stand over the ride your vehicle, look down at the passengers and light them up. That has happened. That absolutely has happened on a couple occasions. We talked about the story in Atlanta where an Escalade was shot up 50 times. They were trying to kill a woman that was in it. And there's a story out of Chicago like that where you got eight tight pattern rounds right there at the back window trying to kill the driver, which they or the passenger, which they successfully did take his life. But you got to pay attention to your surroundings at all times. There's just too much of this. In my humble opinion, Right now, with what ride sharing pays, with them continuing to focus on paying us less and less as the time goes on, you might seriously consider doing something else. This may get to the point, in my humble opinion, it already has, but it may get to the point for you where this is no longer worth it. It's just no longer worth it. Now, this guy was an Iraqi immigrant. I did a story not long ago of an Afghanistan, an immigrant from Afghanistan that came here. He was an interpreter killed in D.C., another Washington, D.C. case where they were trying to carjack the guy and they shot him dead. They actually took his life. That was about a month ago. So it hasn't even been that damn long since that case happened. So understand there is this is certainly a dangerous way to earn a living. I don't know what the base fare in D.C. is, but it's not worth this shit. It's simply not worth this. I'm going to assume the base fare in D.C. is certainly less than a dollar per mile. It's just not worth driving at night in some of these neighborhoods, dealing with shit like this day in, day out, wondering when is the next time you're not going to come home? What night are you what night is your family going to get a phone call that something happened to you? Sending your spouse out to engage in ride sharing is almost becoming the same as sending your spouse out to be a law enforcement officer. You're worried when the damn phone rings if somebody is telling you that your loved one has lost their life. It is getting dangerous, folks. It is really getting serious out here. But just wanted to tell you, stay safe. Be careful where you park at. Be careful approaching intersections at night in neighborhoods that are, you know, sparsely populated or, you know, there's not a lot of people around. Be careful of all of that shit and certainly pay attention 
to the addresses you're being dispatched to and the locations you're dropping people off at. Sometimes that can have red flags and clues in it as well. Somebody gets in your vehicle and make a change to the trip, which I'm definitely not a fan of, but Uber and Lyft allows people to make changes to their destination. You notice the destination is, you know, on a fucking bank of a river somewhere. The goal may be to put you in the river. So pay attention to everything that's going on at all times. Certainly when you're driving at night, because nothing good happens after midnight. Damn. It's your boy Tim. As always, subscribe to the channel. Click the like button. Stay safe. See you in the next video.